Hello and welcome back everyone, Anth Wolf here with even more Star Wars The Old Republic. Playing as Yevra here, my Sith Apprentice. And it is time for us to leave the Sith Academy, indeed it's time for us to leave the world of Korriban. We must take a shuttle to the Imperial Fleet and then locate transportation to take us to the capital world of Droman Kass. So, one thing we should mention before we leave. I did talk about Kemval, our newest companion. We had a look at his biography and what he likes and dislikes. What we didn't really talk about so much was, re was influence. We did mention that he will like or dislike choices that we make throughout the storyline, through our dialogue options. Regardless of whether he likes or dislikes those choices, we will gain influence with our companions. Kemval, and of course other companions we may gain in the future. As we gain more influence ranks, our companions will become more capable. They will deal more damage, have more health. And that is somewhat important. But, I just thought I'd uh, mention that. And let's get ourselves underway, shall we? This shuttle is docking at Viaken Space Dock. And we gain a little bit more experience. Okay, so. We're going to spend a little bit of time here at Viaken Space Dock. We'll do a little bit of exploration. As we will be visiting here various times during this series. So I might as well point out the various different sections that we may be visiting. So, welcome to Viking Space Dock, everyone. When you would first arrive here, there used to be quest givers who would meet you to talk about how you could make more of your potential, how you could choose or dedicate yourself to a certain path, a certain advanced class, and then learn unique abilities dedicated to said pass. You would then travel to the combat section wing and have a word with your particular class trainer and dedicate yourself to an advanced class. As such, for example, the Sith Inquisitor is the base class of the Sorcerer and the Assassin. And it's only after you would leave your tutorial world, your prologue world of Korriban, or Hutter, if you were playing as a bounty hunter or an Imperial agent, that you would choose to become a sorcerer or an assassin here and now, and learn what abilities were unique to one of those advanced classes. Here as well, obviously we have the combat training wing. On the inner sector, we have the various PvP vendors. We'll no doubt have a look at them later on. We also have various 
heroic missions available to us. Of course, we know about the two on Korriban, but due to our level, it's mentioning that there are heroics available to us on Dromenkas and a world known as Balmora. We'll learn about those, no doubt, more in the future. We'll head, a, head around the outer wing, first of all. We're going to quickly make use of this priority mission terminal. These are kind of introduction or tutorial missions you may take. We're going to grab the crafting trainer tutorial. Remain vigilant during this Rakul emergency. Use of lethal force against plague carriers is authorized and encouraged. Indeed. The Rakul resurgence event on Tatooine has just begun. And if we knew about Tatooine, we might be able to uh, participate. At this present point in time, we are unable to participate, of course. So, crafting and gathering trainers. They are here in the crew skill sector. And what you have is various crafting trainers who can make various robes or heavier armor who can make various weapons or implants and earpieces then we have various optional crew skills which complement crafting and then finally, you have various gathering trainers as well. Now, the interesting thing about gathering trainers is that some of their crew skills are complemented when you, or they're useful, I should say, when running various dungeons, running various flashpoints in this game. There are certain shortcuts you may wish to take. And if you have the complementary gathering skill, you could unlock that shortcut. For the moment, I'm trying to decide what we should take. I think we'll take scavenging. And I think we'll take archaeology. We could take a third gathering skill, but I think we'll take one crafting skill, which will allow us to disassemble items later on. So we have our crew skills window here. We could get our companion to make us various uh, items. Some of them actually are better at the moment. <laughs> and as we level up the synth weaving ability, more armor, more types of armor would become available. And we'd be able to purchase more advanced items as well. But I'm really just picking up synth weaving for the disassembling option later. On the inner wing of this section, we have various decorating vendors and stronghold vendors. You are able to purchase a home for your character and decorate that home how you wish. I have a few ideas. I may actually purchase a home for Yevra. I've been picking up some rather interesting items of late. I might actually invest some time in building a home for our newest apprentice here. We 
We now have the Galactic Trade Network. Where if we wanted to purchase items from other players or sell items that are of course sellable to other players, we could make use of, make use of these various kiosks. And there are also various vendors on the outer wing of this sector. For example, we could purchase What can I get for you? A very basic speeder. For the little amount of credits we actually have. Are any of the basic speeders? Hmm, not really. They're not overly impressive. To be fair, we are not overly impressive right now. Come back anytime. We also want to adjust how our character looks. We have a appearance modification terminal here. The final section on the outer region of Viaken Space Dock is the supply section, if I remember correctly. Indeed. As we level up, we will be getting armor from the various heroic missions we complete and from the various quests on the worlds we visit. And they will be determined either by the level of the world we visit or by our character's level. Problem grow out of hand. The Imperial First Fleet is pre-authorized to commence full-scale orbital bombardment of Tatooine. Thank you. In addition, there are various armors and weapons, like this lightsaber, that you can adjust the internal pieces of to improve their quality, how effective and how powerful they are. So this is only a level 8, an item rating 36 lightsaber hilt as part of the full lightsaber itself. But we could probably find a higher level hilt with greater stats from a vendor here in the supply sector. In fact, we could purchase a level 14 hilt. But we can purchase items I think all the way up to level 70? Maybe even level 75. Yeah. We have level 70 modifications available to us by that time by the time we are getting to a point where we need level 70 items we'll be able to purchase levels level to 80 gear and no doubt i can send some gear over from my other characters if i so choose I'm just going to briefly head into the inner ring where we have a nice simple cantina here. And we also have a law object on Viaken Space Dock itself. One of the many stations peppered throughout Imperial space, sorry, of the many stations, none rival the size or importance of Viaken Space Dock. Viaken is the true hub of the Imperial fleet, a logistical nucleus responsible for the vast majority of the Empire's military operations. In fact, the base has become so vital that it has been named after the Sith Empire's first Grand Moth, Odile Viken. 
Despite its usual compliment... Per Ministry of Biotic Science guidelines, airlock expulsion has been approved as an acceptable method of Raquel Plague Carrier disposal. Thank you. Despite its usual complement of several dozen capital warships, Biaken Space Dock is also one of the Empire's most well-guarded locales. Biken is commonly upgraded to the latest in shielding technology and detection sensors, and its vast arsenal has a combined destructive power that could potentially lay waste to a small moon. And it just so happens we are outside of the Drummond Cash Cass departure elevator. Mem ama kupka kramanik umlu kiga mayamak nuli lak apa jam kamgam amka nem nang ampa nem nang memua inok nikad aga kip debab naya amgam baraka ki glad to hear it nane kari maraka amkam ja uklibik memarak nebab karahika so we have the valet here telling us we have a private shuttle which will take us several days but it's rather comfortable and would get us to drum and cass soundly and without incident on the other hand there is a transport vessel known as the black talon which is rather quick and would get us to drum and cass considerably faster but is known to travel through dangerous territory. It just so happens that Lord Zash has acquired us a berth on the transport vessel if we so chose. The Black Talon is the first of the various Imperial aligned uh, flashpoints. Some flashpoints are. Mm usable or accessible regardless of what faction you are part of whether you're part of the republic or the empire but while an imperial player here will be traveling the drum and cast via the black talon a republic player will be doing the flashpoint known as the esseles thank you very much for joining me though at the moment we will take a break i'm going to spend a little bit of time looking at various outfits for Yevra here. I would like a few outfits that may be suitable for her as she develops in her position within the Sith hierarchy. So I'm going to spend a bit of time. I may of course keep the outfit we've gained from Korriban, but I may change the outfit for something more suitable as we board the Black Talon. I've yet to decide. Either way, as I say, thank you all for joining me. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you so wish, and hopefully I'll see you for even more next time. Until then, no take care. Bye-bye now.